with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about overhead obstructions. Something that people driving larger vehicles are prone to striking and in a recent camping trip uh, there was a building as you can see in the photo here uh, of a building in the corner of it had been struck by somebody with an RV trailer obviously. Uh, the building kind of sat at an odd angle but the um, the soffit overhung the roadway and if people were not careful and didn't see the obstruction they were going to run into it. So one of the key points of overhead obstructions is that stay away from trees and buildings. They like to take bites out of vehicles. And uh, I'll just give you two examples in the time that I was driving uh, commercial vehicles. I had two altercations, both of them minor, but still struck overhead obstructions. One of them was uh, at a loading dock in Florida. The dock itself was kind of inside the building and there was a roll-up door. Well, when I went back to open the doors in the back of the trailer, I didn't realize that somebody hadn't pushed the door all the way up and it was down about a foot. So when I backed in, obviously struck the overhead door and uh, the shipper wrote on my bills of lading that I had struck the door, that it was my responsibility. So I, as the driver, had been held responsible for the door being struck. Another incident, I was hauling garbage and the, the garbage was very dry and on the transfer trucks that came out of uh, Toronto, they loaded the trucks to maximum weight capacity, which was about 35 tons. If you pulled on the scale and the, the, the trailer wasn't loaded, they backed you back in and then they proceeded to, with a large excavator, hammer on as much of uh, the garbage as they could to get you to maximum weight. What I didn't notice when I pulled the tarp over the load was it was sticking up five or six inches. Went under an underpass in Michigan that was exactly 13 feet six inches, probably like two or three inches of clearance. Pulled the entire tarp off the back of the trailer and some of the garbage blew off because it was a couple of miles down the road to the garbage dump. It's gonna happen. You're, if you're driving professionally, you're gonna get into trouble. And hopefully it's a minor incident, not a major incident. Professional drivers need to know that their vehicles are 4.15 meters or 13 feet 6 inches in the states. Read the road signs. If you're on minor roads or in suburban areas and there's an overpass, make sure that you know exactly what the height of your vehicle is. For recreational drivers and U-Haul drivers, U-Haul is very good about labeling inside the vehicle what the exact height of the vehicle is. Recreational drivers, on the other hand, do not know what the height of the vehicle is and it's imperative that you take the time and measure it. Most of the time for recreational drivers you're going to get into trouble in gas stations, refilling stations, the canopies. Nine times out of ten they're going to be, there's going to be enough clearance because in the last couple of decades these have all been renovated and raised up because of people with larger RV trailers getting in there. Again, the story I opened with be careful in campsites. Never trust a GPS unit, even if it's a commercial unit. Use your eyes. As Malcolm Reynolds says in the movie Serenity, if you want to find somebody, use your eyes. It's the same thing. If you are unclear that you are going to fit under a bridge, overpass, or other clearance, and you don't know for sure because you don't know the height of your vehicle or you don't know the height of the overhead clearance, get out of your vehicle and look. And don't look standing next to the vehicle. You have to get back away from the vehicle a good distance to get a perspective of how high your vehicle is and how high the obstruction is. If the obstruction is down here, you are definitely not going to go under. Finally, if you find yourself in that situation where you have stopped, traffic is backed up behind you and you can't get around, you can't get the vehicle turned around because there's not enough room, you're going to have to back up. Oftentimes, people are very helpful. If you put your four wheels on and back up slowly, they'll move out of the way. They'll accommodate you. Somebody with local knowledge will help you. They're very good about that. People love helping truck drivers. Uh, one time in New York State, there was a bridge overpass, my introduction to New York, that measures from the center of the hub as opposed to from the road. All of the signs are labeled 12.6, 12.8, 13 feet. Well, your vehicle is only 13.6, so it's not going to fit under there. I stopped. At this bridge where I was given directions, it said 12.8. Well, I'm not going to fit under there. One of the locals came up and told me that trucks went under there all the time. It was very helpful. Of course, I went very slowly under the bridge, and of course, they fit. The thing about New York State is they still haven't rectified this problem of measuring from the center of the hub. So know that New York State is somewhat different. But again, do not trust your 
GPS, do not trust the signs. If you're unsure, stop, get out and look. And in dire cases where you can't get backed up and traffic will not help you out, call the police. That's what they're for, to come out, stop traffic, move traffic around and get backed up. You try and do a U-turn, as in the video that I'm showing you here. Sometimes you could do more damage to your vehicle than if you just wait and think about what you're going to do logically. Okay, Overhead obstructions and clearances. Know the height of your vehicle. 13, six, 13 feet 6 inches in the US, 4.15 meters in Canada. Recreational vehicles. Measure your vehicle. Know how high it is. Be careful at gas station canopies. U-Haul drivers, it's inside the truck. It's very well labeled how high that vehicle is. Do not bash the front of the vehicle in. Commercial drivers, recreational drivers, you haul rental vehicles. You know, stop and look. Get out and look if you're the least bit unsure. And do not proceed. Back up. Call the police. Have an action plan in place that will see you safe and other road users safe as well. Thanks for watching. I'm Rick with Smart Drive Test. Remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day.